Thank you for joining as we discuss the Crosslink Business Module. Now today we're going to walk through a return as we evaluate how Crosslink facilitates the completion of business returns by using proven and efficient methods. We're going to begin by first discussing how Crosslink Business is integrated into the already established Crosslink 1040 platform and many of the benefits that will come along with that integration. Also, a similar methodology will be used for creating and processing a return. Today we're going to walk through that process, client data, to transmit. And finally, we'll examine how Crosslink Business uses proven functionalities that you're used to using in the Crosslink 1040 software to give users various and efficient ways of completing the tax return. Crosslink Business is integrated into the Crosslink 1040 software. And that 1040 software has been relied upon by tax professionals for decades. And Crosslink Business, with that integration, is ready to be a productive part of your office's software far into the future. With that integration, users will recognize the same efficient and intuitive methodology used in the Crosslink 1040. And additionally, preparers can utilize many of the signature features of Crosslink, including the digital signature pad, document archive, point and shoot error correction, and many more. Currently, the entities supported by the Crosslink Business Package are Form 1065 for Partnership Returns, Form 1120 for Corporation Returns, and Form 1120S for S-Corporation Returns. Now, before we move into the program, completing returns in Crosslink Business uses the same simple and familiar process as 1040 returns. We're going to complete our client data sheet to enter basic information about our business client. The income statement and the balance sheet is where the initial financial information will be input. After completing the financial statements, we'll add and complete any additional forms or schedules that are needed. Afterwards, we'll simply verify for accuracy, and then we'll print or archive the documents required for both you and your client. And then, of course, we'll transmit the return to the IRS. And with that, we're ready to move into the program. Now, from our familiar work in progress screen, a new link has been added. From within the tax return section at the top left of the work in progress screen, there's a new link for business returns. We're simply going to click that link and be taken to a business return summary. Notice the similarities of this with the work in progress summary. From here, we can access our existing returns, create new returns, and if need be, fix any rejected returns. Now, to begin a new return, we'll simply click the Add New button at the top of the screen or use our keyboard functionality with the combination Alt-A. Crosslink will display the Add New Corporate Return window and we'll simply enter our EIN twice for accuracy, select our entity, and then click OK. However, for time purposes today, I have a return that's already been started with some basic information, so I'm going to cancel from starting a new return, and I'm also going to show you how to list all of your returns by going to Select a Return. You can take advantage of the various search options at the top left here, or just click Go to display all of your returns. In this case, I have three in a nice, sortable, searchable format. I'm simply going to find the return that I'm looking for and double-click to open. Now, this will open our existing business tax return. And now, many of you will notice the screen layout parallels with the 1040 product. Users can utilize toolbars at the top of the screen for commonly completed tasks. The black information bar displays important information about the return such as name, EIN, and date created. There's an attached form section that allows easy navigation from general, federal, and state form. The active form, in this case the client data form, is displayed with color-coded fields, and an active window below conveniently gives information and access to various functionalities. So with that, let's take a look at this client data screen and work our way down. Starting at the top, you can see that we collect some basic information about this business. We're going to start with the EIN and business name, and then some information and contact info about the officer responsible with correspondence to the IRS, even including the information needed to be able to use our text link functionality. As we continue to scroll down, we'll see that we'll need to enter an address for this particular corporation, including being able to use the zip code locator. As we continue to scroll down our client data sheet, we'll collect some business information. We'll start with the date of organization, or in this case, incorporation for this particular firm, the state in which it was organized, also the NAICS code. This is very similar for those of you that are already preparing returns in Crosslink 1040 as the business codes at the top of the Schedule C. 
And just like those codes, if you look at our active window below, you'll see that we have choices. This will display a number of different codes for easy selection with just a double click. After entering our principal product or service, we'll notice that we have information for a fiscal year if needed. The service center will be completed based on the address, and then we're simply going to mark our accounting method. Afterwards, we have four options. First of all, we can force schedules L, M1, and M2. Also, we have an allocation and apportionment worksheet for assets tracked across multiple states. The next allows us to answer no to all the questions on the schedules for other information. Other than that, the fourth checkbox allows us to use tax information reported on asset worksheets to complete our balance sheet. Below, we've got some applicable boxes if we've got an initial or a final return. Also, if there's a change to this return, such as the name or address. After that, we've got some bank account information, very similar to like you're using the 1040 software. And once again, we also use another database to track bank routing numbers. Our preparer information is also selected from a database, also the same database as the 1040 software, allowing us to quickly and efficiently enter numerous fields of information. And last but certainly not least is the ability to track our referrals to see how we're gaining these new business clients. Now that we have our client data screen completed, let's take just a second, use our attached forms list on the left to navigate to our Form 1120. Please notice that a lot of the basic information will be completed with information from that client data screen. Also, it's important to note the crosslink color coding at this point. Our color coding scheme typically will be light blue for data entry fields and dark gray for calculated. And as you can see here, most of our 1120 is going to be calculated fields. So with that, our information will be coming from other places within this return. We just completed the client data sheet. The next step that we're going to move to is our financial statements. Specifically, we're going to start with the income statement by double clicking on it and our attached forms general listing to get to that particular form. Now before beginning the income statement, it is important to note that Crosslink users will have the option of importing financial data from the most popular bookkeeping software. Now in order to begin this process, simply click the return menu and select import financial data. Now assuming that we'll be entering the information ourselves, let's start with this particular sheet. You can see that as we enter this information, Crosslink will automatically calculate and give us running totals. So if we enter an amount for returns or an allowances, you can see that the dark gray field for 1C is going to be calculated and completed for us. In addition to entering information directly into these light blue fields, we can also utilize worksheets to detail information. So instead of summing our ordinary interest on line 3A, we could use Control W on our keyboard to list a worksheet and detail that information instead of just one sum. As we continue to scroll down, you can see that we list various other types of income that can be listed on this income statement. I do want to point out line 8H for other income or loss not recorded above. This is a miscellaneous section that allows us to list things that may not be denoted with a line up above. So for example, if we use our choices in the next code box here, we can see some of these examples. Now it's also an opportunity to enter in some dividends that may have been received from a corporation owned by this corporation. Like for example, if I was to pick code 19 for Schedule C dividends and just enter an amount here, later on when we look at our Schedule C, we'll see that that calculation has taken place for us. Continuing to scroll down when we get to our expenses, we do start with cost of goods sold in which we can enter information directly attributed to inventory. Also, please note that line 9D is a calculated field with that information between the opening and closing inventory coming from our balance sheet, which is going to be the next form that we'll look at. Other than that, it's just entering expenses directly on the form itself. Now it's also important to note that this particular income statement will automatically track the difference between book and tax income. For example, if this particular corporation spent 10000 on meals, on their income statement they spent 10000 on meals. However, for tax purposes, many of you are used to this figure, you're only counting 50%. So you see how I enter the 10000 here and it tracks the 5000 
or 50% for tax purposes. As I continue to scroll down, being a C corporation, that we could possibly have some tax due on this one and possibly be making payments throughout the year. So if we look at line 32, there's a spot for four different types of taxes. Specifically, I want to point out 32A for federal income taxes. Clicking on the worksheet is going to allow you to list the different payments that might have been made by this particular corporation directly onto this form, and it will carry a sum for us to the line once completed. When I close this, you'll see that I've now got this number carried forward, part of my income statement, and also denoting tax paid by this particular corporation, allowing us to conveniently enter information all in this one place, and it be tax or book income. Now, once we've completed our income statement, it's time to move on to our balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet is a summary of the financial balances of a company. Now, much like the income statement, Crosslink uses information from this primary form to streamline the completion of business returns. I do want to point out an option to automatically reconcile your balance sheet. Now, what this does is ensure that your assets equal the combination of your liabilities and owner's equity. If I'll just come in and place a beginning cash amount and an end to cash amount, I'll need to have assets or owner's equity equal those two numbers in order for my balance sheet to balance. By checking this box at the top, this will automatically put any unbalanced amount into the unappropriated retained earnings field, thus ensuring that my balance sheet is balanced before moving on. Again, once this is completed, the information from here will go throughout the return where needed. Now that we've completed our client data, income statement, and balance sheet, it's time to look at adding any additional forms or schedules. Now, in order to do so, I can simply click the Add New button at the top left or use my keyboard combination of Control-A. Now, once I do so, Crosslink is going to display the All Forms and Schedules window. Before selecting any forms, let's look at the series of tabs across the top of the window. The first tab, Federal, displays the corporate forms in a numerical order with a search for locating forms quickly and efficiently. The next tab is Index. Index allows users to find forms by topic instead of requiring them to know the form number or schedule. Another important tab is the State tab. Selecting the State tab will show you the attached states, as well as give you a drop-down to attach any additional states by being able to select the appropriate forms to add to your return. For today's sample purposes, I'll simply add a Schedule D to this particular return by double-clicking. You'll notice that it becomes part of my Forms tree on the left. And if I add a short-term gain, I could just enter the information from the sales price here, the cost in the column next, and this information will move directly to my 1120. Let's look at our 1120. Now that we've completed the client data, the financials, and added additional forms or schedules, you'll see that the 1120 itself is mostly completed. You'll see my various types of income. You'll also see my capital gain on line 8 that we just entered on our Schedule D. As we continue to scroll down, you'll see the various deductions that are already included. Scrolling more, you can see the tax that we entered on our financial statement, leaving us with a small balance due, information about our partner responsible, and even the information about the dividends that we received doing the calculation for us about how much we need to include as income for this corporation on our Schedule C. All of this done from the three generic forms and by adding the Schedule D. You can see how Crosslink Business streamlines the completion of entering the financial information for corporate returns. Now before finishing this return, it is important to point out an additional functionality of the Crosslink software. Now Crosslink allows preparers to utilize information on this return to change entities to see what tax differences could arise from doing so. We could easily present the tax differences that would arise from this by going to my return menu and selecting change entity type. From here, we can select a new type of entity. For our example, today we'll select 1065, click OK. It doesn't alter our return. It doesn't erase or change anything about our return that we're working on. It simply creates a new tax return and allows us to open that return like any other return. Now, once we've added and completed the necessary forms and looked at some of our various options, it's now time to verify our return. Now, to verify a return, it's just like you do it in the 1040 software. You could use Control-V on your keyboard, or you could simply just click your Verify button at the top of the screen. Now, Crosslink is going to display 
any potential errors and omissions before sending this return on. This is where we can take advantage of another signature feature already incorporated into the Crosslink 1040 software referred to as point and shoot error correction. Basically with my list of things that need my attention, I can select one and press enter. It will take me directly to that field that I need to complete. In this case, I'll go ahead and answer no for this particular question. Now in order to complete point and shoot error correction or to continue with it, we'll press enter again and it will take us to the next item on our list. However, instead of going through and finishing the return that way, I do want to point out another nice time saving feature. Our schedule K includes a checkbox at the top to answer no to all of the questions. But by using this box, we save the time of going through and checking each one of these. Now when I verify my return, I'm down to one piece of information that needs my attention. By double clicking or pressing enter, I can see that my corporation has a tax payment due. And just like that, let's re-verify the return. And I've completed a corporation return within Crosslink Business. Now, now that the return has been completed, verified, and our client is satisfied, it's time to print a copy for you and your client. Now, let's look at some of the options that we have. Let's come up and print button and click print final return. Crosslink will display the print final return window. As we look at a few of the options here, print will print the final return based on our program settings. Sign doc will allow us to utilize a digital signature pad, much like the 1040 software, allowing our client to sign the document and even store a paperless copy in our document archive, saving both time and resources. Now additionally, you can create a PDF of the return by clicking the PDF button and even choose to encrypt it with a password for an additional layer of security. Now once our return is printed, the next step in completing this return is to transmit our electronically file. In order to do so, we'll simply click transmit at the top of the screen. We'll ensure that the appropriate entities are selected to be queued and then we'll simply click send. Crosslink will set our return status to return queued and the next time that we transmit to Central Site, our return will be sent to the IRS. And with that, we've completed a corporate return client data to transmit in the Crosslink business software. Now as you've seen, Crosslink uses its proven functionalities to streamline the business return preparation process and users can look forward to utilizing an active window which gives detailed instructions and quick access to lists, worksheets, and form links. The databases which store information such as bank routing numbers and NAICS codes, reducing the risk of data entry and decreasing the time of data entry input. The signature pad, an excellent time-saving feature in Crosslink which streamlines the signing of documents by both preparers and clients. And with used in conjunction with the document archive, can help reduce filing time and resources by storing digital copies of documents directly within the return. And bookmarks and notes, which are great tools that you can use to remind yourself of information and any items that are needed to complete a return. So in closing, using an established platform allows Crosslink users to hit the ground running concerning their business returns. Once users obtain or complete the basic financial statements, most of that data entry is going to be complete. Crosslink users can look forward to utilizing the same great time-saving, error-reducing functionalities they're accustomed to within the Crosslink 1040 software. And of course, the same great technical support, account management, and training teams are going to be there for you as well. This concludes our Crosslink Business 1120 Corporation walkthrough.